had uh, a very interesting question. She lives in a remote area, and she says, uh, I have a dog, not as a pet, rather as a dog of security. Is it permissible or not? That is the first question. The second, that sometimes the kids get to play with the dog. Is it permissible or not? What is the ruling on the impurity which may happen because they wear special clothes and so on? Also, what happens when the dog uh, licks her abaa or outer garment? How should she, she deal with that? So first of all, the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith which is narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. And it is a sound hadith collected by both al-Bukhari and Muslim. من اقتنى كلبا إلا كلب صيد أو ماشية فإنه ينقص منه كل يوم قيرطان When who have a dog other than a dog of security or for guarding the sheep cultivation that decreases from the balance of his reward every day the amount of two qirats. The qirat is a significant amount. It has been explained in another hadith when the Prophet ﷺ was encouraging us to attend the funeral prayer and follow the funeral until the deceased is buried and said if you do that you get two qirat of reward. Each qirat is similar to the mountain of Uhud. Can anyone afford to lose that much reward from his or her account on a daily basis simply uh, because of keeping uh, a dog as a pet uh, at home. Uh, some people think when Islam says that do not take a dog as a pet or harsh to animals or whatever, entirely the opposite. Because we know that the Prophet ﷺ said there was a prostitute who entered heaven because she found a stray dog was very thirsty, was about to die out of thirst, so she offered him the water by filling her shoe from the uh, water in the well, and she gave it to the dog, and the dog was saved. But we're talking about the impurity that is in the saliva of the dog, and the impurity is not in the entire body. So, when is allowed, according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, to keep a dog for security, if he or she really needs it for security, okay? Not just for fun, or to keep it barking in front of the house, but you really need it, then this is permissible. And you make sure that you feed it, and uh, you treat it properly. It is impure, and the impurity is in the saliva. The Prophet ﷺ said in one hadith, إذا ولغ الكلب في إناء أحدكم فليغسله سبع مرات إحداهن بالتراب إن نظر ذلك والنيريشن أولاهن بالتراب If the dog happens to lick in the utensil or the container of any of you then you make sure before using the same container for your own self that it must be washed seven times one of those seven times or the first time must be washed with dirt, with the soil. And uh, of course scientific researches have proven that it is the only way that can kill and get rid of the germs that is found in the dog's saliva. So if you keep it for security, then there is no excuse or reason for uh, you guys to play with the dog. And if it happens while you're serving, uh, putting the food or the drink to the dog or moving it from a place to another, it touches your clothes. The impurity is not in the entire body. Rather, it's only in the saliva. So if the dog licks you or any part of you, that must be washed. If he licks the clothes, the same applies here, similar to what I said in the case of the container. It must be washed seven times uh, as well. If you know the spot exactly, it will be sufficient to wash that certain spot. And you won't be able to pray in such clothes without purifying your clothes or the spot which was uh, uh, contaminated with the impurities or the saliva of the dog. Wallahu ta'ala, a'la wa a'la.